Uh, I think Wormwood has okay, some here we go. vaults. Oh. Oh, oh, here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Six Nights of Gaming again. We're back for another hour of amazing. We're here with, oh my God, something, Pon Mike Ponson. What's, his, what's the, the handle? Maximum Mike Ponson. Maximum. Ponsman. Excuse me. I'm just learning these codes like right now. Maximum. You forgot the maximum? <laughs> you can kill me. It'll be good. Maximum I will kill Mike you Ponsman. anyway. I don't need an excuse. <laughs> Too tall. Too tall, John Kowalski. Too much for me, John Kowalski. <laughs> <laughs> we really screwed him up by giving ourselves code names. Yeah. Mark Mir, yeah. a.k.a. Incognito. Guy Incognito. You know. yeah. And Tommy Gun. See, you remember that one. Well, yeah. I came up All with right. it like right now. All right. I was going hey, to say chronostatic, but I think Lauren would get real mad. So we're moving on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Love you, Lauren. Hello. So, okay. we got our volume. All right, Mike, uh, we okay. are playing, uh, or Maximum Mike, we are playing Cyberpunk Red. You got it. You're going to give us a little rundown and a little scenario. I will lead this to you, and you can uh, give us the updates. Okay, so I'll fill you in on this. Cyberpunk was the original Cyberpunk game uh, way back in the 80s. We've updated it to what we call Cyberpunk Red, which brings it in line with the work we've been doing with CD Projekt Red. Uh, for the Cyberpunk 2077 project as Excellent. well. So this entire time span is a united timeline. Oh, I all love it. All the way through from 2013, all the way up to 2077 and beyond. So we have a great time because we talk to each other, we figure out things. Uh, they were fans, which is one reason we hooked up with them. And one of the things we've aimed for is to make it a world that progressively gets deeper and more interesting and has more of a feeling of reality. Right. So this is, you know, we like to say this is, you know, science fiction writers cyberpunk. And we've been, you know, lucky to get people like like Walter John Williams and George Al Geffinger and so forth to write in and let us work in their worlds. Right. So we aim to get a different kind of picture of what the genre is like. And uh, we figure that we really have to honor because it's a really solid, cool genre. I'm excited. Yeah, well, I hope so. I'm, I'm really stoked for, for some cyberpunk. Well, I will warn you that uh, over the years, this has gained a interesting reputation for being insanely lethal, um, <laughs> which is why I can have a Mike Kills Your Character game um, <laughs> pretty much every Gen Con, where I let you know, eight lucky people come in and then I massacre their characters. Just because. Really? Yeah, remember when I sent the Velociraptors after you guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Mike, I would be honored. <laughs> oh. I would be honored if you kill me, but only if you kill John first. I've been trying for a long time. So that time. I can <laughs> capture it on the media and make sure that the, uh, the world okay. sees. See, that's why I'm playing a different character today. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Right. Mike, I'd be honored to be killed in whatever order you see fit. Aww. I like to randomize it, so okay, I think you right. guys just have to wait for the hammer of doom to strike you. <laughs> Very well. God. Okay. Very well. So everybody's got their characters. Okay, yeah. Okay, Let's let me give people just a real fast picture of how this game works. It is not anywhere as complex as you think. Okay. There's only one thing you really have to do when you are trying to do anything in Cyberpunk, in any iteration. And that is, you will take the stat that is most related to what you want to do, you will take the skill, if you have it, that's related to it, and you will then take 1D10, okay. and you'll roll that and add it. So for example, we were talking earlier about guns and weapons and so forth. So for example, Mark, Sure. Uh, or uh, uh, what are you calling yourselves again? Uh, my uh, my you... handle is Mover. I'm uh, I've been described okay. as the blunt instrument of the group. So I think that uh, you're the mover. Yeah, and uh, and it looks as though he does have quite a good handgun skill. His mm -hmm. stat, the relevant stat, I assume, is reflexes or perhaps dex. No, it's, it's reflexes. It's reflexes. So uh, he also has six levels in handgun for mm -hmm. a total of thirteen. Thirteen. So then he would roll die, and what I would be doing, meanwhile, is looking because of the way we do gun combat. Mm -hmm. I would be looking at the range to target and the weapon you're using. Sure thing. That's important. Um, we have gone back and forth on this over the years, but only people who are basically cyber enhanced have a chance to dodge a bullet. You sure know, thing. you've got to be cool, super fast. All right. Well, okay. let's let's see. So I've got a 13. Right. I'm using my very heavy pistol. Okay, and you're fairly close. So I'm going to say, in this case, you got to get a 13 or better. All right. 
So that is five plus 13, 18. 18, you hit, okay? Right. Now, couple cool things. One of them is this system uses exploding dice. Ooh, so whoa. that means that uh -oh. if you had rolled, yes, back off. If you had rolled and you had gotten a 10, yep. which, then you would roll again. Okay. So you needed a 15 add. before. So you had had 23, I believe, by this point. And then you roll again. Oh, unfortunately, you only got a one, right. which is actually appropriate because the dice explode the other way. Huh? Okay. So if you roll a one, then we basically have you roll again to see subtracting that value Holy from cow. your dice roll. Okay. And then I use tables or my own evilness to decide what happened. How bad was it? That is wow. evil. I've never seen a game so, where it so takes my you, dice away from me. Mm -hmm. by, oh, That's okay. crazy. Explode and explode? No, you can explode once. Once, got it. Okay, okay, okay wow. but that's still, you can get a character that is, you know, pulling 30s out. That's crazy. No problem. Okay. So really, so, like so you can explode both roll. ways in the same roll. No. I've never no. experienced that before. No, you will explode. If you get a one the second time yeah. on an exploding, it's just a one. Oh, okay. okay, okay. So, so yeah, in that you're, case, you're in that example that we talked about, yes. I, if I'd rolled a wow. 10, yeah. take it up to 23, roll a one, takes it up to 24. Right. Okay. And at that point at 24, you could be, you know, Fold 50 meters away and, you know, fire your pistol, your submachine gun. What you'll see is there's a curve that certain weapons are better at certain ranges. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's based on what they do in real life. So cool. we've tried to make this all kind of feel right without taking it to the extreme of so much crunch that only, a, you know, somebody heavily into guns would really like or understand it. Sure. So that's how you do stuff here. That's and crazy. And in general... Difficulty values run from simple, everyday, difficult, professional, heroic, incredible, and legendary. And I'll give you difficulty values along that line yeah. when you try to do stuff. So if you want to do something crazy, like yeah. jump off a chandelier or slide on the Coke can, mm -hmm. shoot six guys and go through the window to escape, it's legendary. It's so legendary, but, but the great part is you also have, as one of your stats, luck. And oh. luck is a value that you can burn on a one-to-one -one basis. So if you have a luck of 10, because you're really lucky, okay. you know, you're Han Solo, um, oh, really? <laughs> you then that's 10 points you can put to any role anywhere that you're doing something. So right. if you need to make that one in a million shot, that's the time to burn it. And okay. that's a one-time deal. It's a one-time deal. So let's you don't say, have to use it all at once. Awesome. Sure, but let's say that the, that that example that we just used was from a high critical point in the game. Uh -huh. I really needed to make that shot, so I would have rolled 24, and I might have said, okay, you know what? I'm burning all six points of luck. That takes me up to a 30. Right. What kind of result could I get with a 30? Uh, with a 30 and the weapons you have, you would basically be able to shoot out to twice the normal range of a gun to shoot them right to the head. Uh, we have modifiers, which I sometimes use to determine where. So you could basically... Within, you know, 12 yards, you could go, I shoot him, I shoot him through the left eye, I blow out his brains, <laughs> and he falls. One right. shot, one kill. All wow. right. I like it. Let's That's try that. That's the sort of style. <laughs> All right. Okay. And just because it's appropriate, these are the damage dice we use. I we love it. Excellent. Bullets, we use everybody? D6s. D6 bullets we get to roll? Oh, yep. that's great. I'd like okay. to thank Steve Jackson for these. Thank you, Steve. He's a fantastic so. little when, nice. you, when you ask, hey, Mike, how much damage? I'm going to shoot at you. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, normally, damage is done using real or regular D6s. I see. But Do they it is my personal. Uh, damage does not explode. Okay. Damage is a known quantity. Exploding is the weirdness of fate. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So, everybody kind of got a pretty good idea of what's going on? I, I mean, so. this is great. So, okay. So, so, we, so we, have, we have a legendary solo, and then we have mm -hmm. a common... Oh, 24-7 uh, <laughs> is my name. There's no <laughs> commonality about me. I am a media. I'm part of the media. Uh, I got my VidLink and my press pass. Okay. I'm not afraid to use them to get what I want <laughs> well, and okay. to get what I need. All right. I'm a citywide figure. I'm seen all over the place. I'm getting past the lines at the clubs, and I'm using my press pass to do what's necessary to get the story told. Okay. Right. I now, also tell the truth. You have another thing. <laughs> if you flip over your sheet, yes. you'll see that on your character sheet, there is a special ability. Oh. 
Okay. Roll ability? Is that what it is? That's a roll ability. All right. Everybody, all right. there are 10 rolls. We can go into this in detail, but there are 10 rolls, uh, which are essentially things, professions that you do within this world. Love it. Okay. And a media is basically a crusading journalist, or he could be a muckraker. He could be anything. Uh, as long as you are trying to convince people that what you're writing or talking about is the truth. So what you have in that ability, which is? Credibility. Credibility. Always. And your credibility mm -hmm. is four. Yep. So that means in most cases, unless you say, I saw Elvis walking naked around the street, most people will believe you. You guys didn't see that? When I was coming here for the stream today, you, I actually saw him. Are you sure that was Elvis? He was naked. Uh, okay. Take well, that, I think take what you do is three. you take... Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you would, in that case, take your cool. My cool? My, okay. And you would add what you had for credibility. Cool. Plus okay. my credibility, which right. is... Right. And I'm going to call that a professional level thing, which means you need to beat a 17. So cool is 8. Credibility is 412. Uh -huh. I'm going to have to roll decently well to make this happen. Right. right. Better. Five. No, three. Three. Correction. Fifteen. Fifteen. So okay. just not enough. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so, you know, the person you're telling that story to, she kind of looks at you in the bar and goes, yeah, right, Elvis. Elvis is dead. Tell so, me you saw Johnny Silverhand and I'll be impressed. Now, if I really <laughs> wanted to make this work, I could blow some luck to and make it then, happen. And then she'd think you were absolutely wonderful and she would let you buy another smash. Well. Because <laughs> you're we'll Mr. Truth. I'm going to save my luck. For when it's absolutely necessary. necessary. Okay. okay, so Fantastic. and let's look at the next number, which is mover, also known as solo. A solo. solo. A solo is a hired gun. Solos basically are the enforcers. They are kind of impromptu cops. They are bodyguards. They are basically people who have weapons that end other people. Okay, I have those. It's very you. Yes. yes. So famous, <laughs> famous so, solos. A famous solo, for example, in the cyberpunk world, is a solo named Morgan Blackhand. Uh, Morgan's been basically solo for 35 years, and he's basically taken out the biggest targets that you can possibly imagine. Okay. He is the John Wick of our world. Ah, who doesn't love a John I, Wick? Exactly. Yeah, and you know, and I, I kept thinking, God, I could, I could have gotten Keanu to play that instead of Johnny. <laughs> Johnny's not that good a shot. <laughs> and now, question: I notice here that my role ability is combat awareness. Combat awareness. Okay. So, a solo is a professional hired soldier. Mm -hmm. So, combat awareness is your ability to know what's going on and to partition that attention to different places. So, for example, you could come into a turn and say, okay, with my combat awareness of four, I'm going to basically spend two points of that to getting a shot off first. And I'll spend the other two points in aiming. Okay. So it's almost like luck, you get it, to attribute it's, it. You get to contribute it. Okay. And this makes solos very tactical. Yes. You come into a situation to go, what do I need to know here? So sometimes solos are casing the joint. Sometimes solos are going, oh, I just got to kill this guy. Sometimes solos are going, I'm going to put everything I've got into getting out of the way. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yes, that was my next question, whether right. that can also be applied to defensive yes. things in combat. Okay. I and see. we're not going to, once again, um, there are a lot of subtleties that go on with special abilities. You know, the role specials. So we're not going to go to it today. We don't really have enough time, but... You know, I encourage you, take a look through the book. We have a lot of stuff online where you can learn about it. Oh, I'm excited. And it is, you know, it's, it's a system that I aimed to make both realistic but easy and playable. Yeah. And I wanted each role to have a certain kind of tactical ability. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, glad you like it because we're moving on to the Nomad. Okay. Uh, and that is? I am Racer today. He racer. is Racer, okay. Racer is a Nomad. Okay. Um, nomads are basically uh, the vehicle guys. You know how you have in, in any heist movie, uh, the guy who drives. He's the driver. The, he's the driver, <laughs> the driver. right. We um, all love a good driver. Yeah, I, I always thought the that. The transporter. Bingo. Yeah. I saw the transporter and I said, it's a nomad in a nice suit. That's it. <laughs> so That's perfect for you. Yeah. Nomads are, because of the fractured nature of the world of the red in that time, the fact that it's very balkanized, 
Uh, it is a world that is very black market and so forth. Um, the way you get things is you need a nomad to get it across the lines, uh, whether it be from space, whether it be off the ocean. Uh, for example, as John knows from an adventure he did with us on Twitch a while back, there are random cargo ships that are programmed with AI that are wandering the ocean because during the war they couldn't come into port for fear of being blown away yeah. between one of the two sides. So nomads get things from A to B, they also get to drive cool stuff. And literally, what you have is a rollability called Moto. Moto 4. Okay, Moto basically, one, it allows you to drive damn near anything. I don't, I don't say, well, you can't fly an airplane because you didn't take airplane. I say instead, yeah, you have Moto, which means as a kid who spent his life in a motor pool, you are pretty much aware and familiar with anything that your family, your tribe, may have access to. Moto is also really slick because it gives you access to the motor pool, which you military guys out there will remember. Mm -hmm. And in this case, because nomads have a group or tribe, also known as a family mm -hmm. that they belong to, that family may be several hundred people. But with Moto at the right levels, you could say, can I borrow the arrow zap because I have a mission. Interesting. Okay. Right. You can also, as you go up, you can actually get personal vehicles that you can modify as your skills and things get going. Uh, this was actually due to the fact that, you know, in driving games, I like a lot of the elements of things, but I don't like the fact that I can't upgrade my vehicle too much without going all the way total Forza, okay? Right. So and if I'm doing GTA, I want to go drop my engine and put something new in. This allows you to do that sort of thing. And uh, it's very modular. You know, you may say, I'll throw some armor on and I'll throw machine guns and hmm. so forth. Or I'll trade it in and I'll get two motorcycles with different arrangements. So Moto has a lot of power. Each one of these has different powers I'm and excited. abilities. I'm excited to, to combine right. them together to create right. a great story. So, right. so, so where why, are we? why would the three of us be together? The yeah, three of you have yeah. been together for quite a while. You've been the driver racer. All right. And right now, you are going to have dusted your AV4 down, and we'll explain what that is in a few moments, okay? You, as a media, often hire and work with Racer because Racer can get you he to the story. He gets me where I need to go. Right, Racer can get you the story and get you out alive. But just in case, you also have Mover. And Mover is assigned, well, you pay him so that he covers your back. Da, I kill who you need me to kill. Da. Exactly. Yeah, but you also make sure no one kills him. You da. know, sometimes I put myself in a situation Unless that they pay more. Well, yeah. I don't think no. I'm going to pay as much as I can. But if, if you're solo and you do a lot of jumping around, it's going to get out on the street. Yeah, yeah solos must have code of honor. You must understand. I mean, He's uh, my client. I am the guard of his body. You know? <laughs> not to mention right. that, you know, sometimes I expose something here and there that people don't like and he keeps them off my back. That's your entire life, let me tell you. One of the things you'll find as you play a media is that we have systems whereby you can get into higher and higher levels of uh, information and knowledge. Keep talking, better, baby. Better rumors, you know, and by the time you're fairly high media, it's like you know how to get private films of the president doing something. woo -wee. You know, you can get Let's some scary power and with your abilities, what you're able to do is convince people once you show them that film of him playing with rubber duckies. Well, the truth is truth is shown in proof, right? That's it. Well, let's do it. You know. That is right. So I will protect your back by shooting them in their front, yeah? Okay. There's okay. some more money good. for you, my friend. Ah, good. Okay. There's a lot more where that came from. Right, Racer? There better be. We're on it. <laughs> okay. All right, where am I driving? Okay. You are driving a AV4. Aerial which vehicle. Is aerial vehicle. Ooh. Uh, actually, fancy. Uh, yeah. The AV series uh, were designed during the first South American War. They are sort of the equivalent of a Huey Copter or a Cobra, except that Oof. they are basically take a gigantic Harrier type engine and put it on something the size of a large ish family van, then put a minigun on it. 
<laughs> so as you do, as they, you do. As you do they, yeah. And they drop, if they're shot and they lose power, they drop like a brick because that's what they are. But as a friend of mine who does aeronautics design said, if I put a big enough engine, I can make anything fly. Wow. So, so these allow you to drop down into the street, allow you to get to the rooftops, allow you to get across town very fast. Very versatile. Yeah. They this are is also your machine. Used, yeah. Yes. Perfect. They are also used by a company which you will encounter uh, called Trauma Team. Uh, it's on my mask. Trauma Team. Oh, hey. Yeah, Trauma right. Team is a, call it a medical ambulance rescue service. I see. And it developed, if you have the money, you have a thing called a Trauma Team card. You break that card, a signal goes out, and the Trauma Team shows up. And since you're in a dangerous environment, the trauma team doesn't mess around. So they're landing essentially an assault vehicle in the middle of where you might be in a firefight or you broke your leg or whatever, and anybody between you and them dies. They are heavily armed. Oh. They are badasses. This is the equivalent of that, that button, that immunity button in the shoot 'em upper games that just keeps you alive for that yeah. one, one moment. Mm -hmm. you, do have, you do have a thing called death save. We won't worry about that quite yet. But yes, a trauma team is there to bail you and they take time to get there, obviously. But, you know, they've got a jet propelled ambulance for God's sake. Yeah, right? man. So, That's great. Okay. So, a couple things before we launch off. You guys are in Night City. Okay, for those of you who have seen Cyberpunk 2077, you will have seen a physical version of Night City in that time period. Uh, kind of dirty, crazy video and lights everywhere. It's neon central. The Night City that you guys are in is about 30 years earlier. And that's okay. because we and the CD guys have a unified timeline. So we're and they're earlier. working one end and you're working on another right now. So being in downtown Philly, it kind of feels like this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. So it's we're in, complete with all the shenanigans. We're in about 2047 or so. Yeah, you're 2045. Okay. 2045, you know? okay. And you are currently, um, parts of the city have been burned down. Some of it's been reconstructed since way up. The biggest thing you should remember is that uh, about 15 years earlier, uh, during the fourth corporate war between two really large paramilitary companies, somebody detonated a pocket nuke in one of the tallest buildings in the city. Oh no. In the corporate center area. And it wiped out the entire corporate center. What? And no one ever exactly figured out who did it. Although there are a lot of rumors. Damn You've you, been trying Gio. to find them. I need yeah. to find out who did this. This has been one of <laughs> yeah, my okay. missions on, yes. on the side of making a little extra cash, exposing yes. you know, uh -huh. a little pharma here, a little technological IT exactly. blabber blabber there. So you have a lead right now. Every yeah. single one of these things, whether it be and pharma or whatever, is leading some minuscule And what you've got right chip. now is you are actually on the trail of some really interesting data. We're close. That was, We're found, close. That was found by a guy who recently got fired and he was working in a, in a data processing company, um, moving stuff around, and he had information. And he got fired, conveniently. So you are going to try to hook up with him, and you want to hook up with him fast, yeah. because there is one other problem. You're not the only media looking for him. That's right. You are up against a guy named Trace Santiago. Trace, Trace Santiago. Santiago. He is another media. His huh. big advantage in this case is his dad, who's the head of the Aldecaldo pack that you're part of, mm. uh, actually was around and had people there during the bomb in Night City. Interesting. So Trace is trying to find out what his dad won't tell him. And the only way he's going to do it is to go talk to people who might have been there. This guy may not have been there, but you want to talk to him because he knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who was there. All right, so, so I'm in the, so I'm in, I'm in need the to get driver's seat of the right. AV4. We got these two guys in the back. Right. I'm coming in hot. Right. Where and am I going? You are dropping down, if the camera can see it. Yep. You are dropping down effectively about there, which is the edge of the street. So you can drop this in about twice the size of what you would be able to do with a minivan. Good positioning. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Uh, that's because cops and ambulance guys and all that all use these specifically because they are that handy. A helicopter, you got to have room. Yeah. This so, you could put right down. I'm going to grab my, my hand onto Solo here and lean in and say, hey, 
if this guy actually has a lead that we need, we're not the only ones here trying to find him, so just keep all that off our back. Okay, Mr. Seven. Okay. I assume you want him alive, yeah? Ah, uh, preferably. Okay. I mean, we can't really download his memories, right? No. Then definitely keep this guy alive. There's okay. a rumor that, you know, you could do that, but, well, no one's found Johnny Silverhand yet. <laughs> yeah. Want, He's still to, dead. Do you want me to come in for backup, or do you want me to keep the engine running? You know what? Uh, do we have the? Uh, do I have any cybernetics? Oh, I got my camera rolling, right? You should have cybernetics. Uh, it says cyberware. Cyber cyber audio suit. That's right. I've got an amplified hearing and a light tattoo, which uh -huh. is awesome. Um, so the cyber audio suite. Uh, I'm gonna have it on so that he can hear what's going on, right. and right. I'm just gonna say, you know, crimson is gonna be the key word if things are starting to get hot. Crimson. Crimson. Got it. If you okay. hear the word crimson in my dialogue in any way. Things are getting hot. Okay, just to be clear, though, shooting him in kneecaps is all right, yes? Oh. He does not need his kneecaps to tell you a story. As long as he can talk yeah. and think. And so, he might talk faster that way. Yeah, exactly. so he does not need kneecaps or fingers or even genitals, probably, yes? Well, I may not be Johnny Silverhand, but let's Silver Tongue start off with a little conversation Okay, first. okay. And okay. then I bring out my knife. Okay, you got it. good. Okay. Oh, boy. So Wild we, and crazy. We're going to enter the okay. building, I so guess? You see, you see, this is the edge of the bodega. This okay. is the street. Lights are pounding. There are two sliding glass doors. This is the wall, essentially, and a piece of glass, a heavy-duty armored glass. Normally, bodegas are small, mom-pop, so like safe um, 7-Elevens. Yeah. Okay. Um, they are one of the best places to get stuff right now because they are hooked up with fixers and fixers are the guys who move the stuff that you bring in and you get the story about it Excellent. and you protect it and so forth so well, as a matter of fact you know that this particular bodega that you're meeting this guy in is also the territory of a rather interesting fixer he's not your friend uh his name is 8020 and uh, 8020 is an interesting character. Um, he does loan sharking. He fences stuff and so forth, which is a pretty fixer thing to do. He also runs a business out of the back of this bodega. And um, back in a walk-in freezer, he has a meat grinder that has been established oh. for people who are recalcitrant and don't want to talk about something. And for the best barbecue in Night City. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well, I'm a little peckish. Let's go see if we can find uh, what it takes to bite okay. that burger. Okay, right. boss, how you so, want to play this? You want me going first okay. or you going so first? So what we're going to do, just to make things easy, Let's look around. Everybody, is anybody in there? everybody tell me what their int is. <laughs> their int? Int. I-N-T. Seven. 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 Okay. Lucky seven. There's my int. Seven. Seven. Right. Okay, everybody is going to roll 1d6. Yep. And it'll be high to low. Uno. And by the way, everybody Six. get a couple dice so they can do what they need to Thank do. You. Okay. Thank you, sir. I only need a couple here to kill you. Cool. Six. I believe this is a six, yes? We got a roll off yeah. over here. Six mm -hmm. and a six. Okay, so, roll again. Two. Uh, that is a four. Okay, so. I believe you go first. Him. Oh. You. You, since I'm not going to track it that tightly, and you guys are all big kids, deal. Uh, keep track of who goes when. I really only call this in to account if there's a reaction system, if there's a situation where you need to get off the mark. You can, as a solo, dedicate some of your time and your combat awareness to allow you to be, you know, more aware. So thus, I'll let you move up in the reaction level, although right now you're pretty much um, second, I believe, in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. so, so that's where we are. As you land, the AV drops in, uh, the lights go. <laughs> you have one of those great little beep, beep but it's a bit more complex. You're using your phone, what's called an agent, and an agent is a incredibly sophisticated computer that's like a cell phone on drugs. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set my AV to protect, just so no one messes with it. Okay, it's like, it's like the guns, Batman right. Batman guns are deal. armed. I'm going to look okay. around, and then I'm going to take a glance through the door and see if I see anybody inside. Uh, you see a bunch of people wandering around inside. Uh, they don't go out of their way to um, 
broadcast what's going on in there. No, 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 I know what I need. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has a mark that says, you die or not. Okay. Okay, they don't usually broadcast who's there, so those windows are relatively opaque. There's just enough light for you to know someone's moving through, and that, you know, the windows are pretty solidly armor glass built. Okay. You know, think of transparent aluminum in Star Trek. Should I go in first? It depends how we want to play this. I, I can would, go in, I make distraction. I to look around, make sure it's clear. I mean, I can pretend like nothing's going on, just here. Then rock it. Yeah, All I right. can go in and say, hey, excuse, uh, do you carry feminine hygiene products? My wife needs such things, you know? Very clever, I, I can say this. I, I this like is, that. It's good cover story, yes? Okay. All right. Boop, boop. Let's go find out, because it's one of the things I love doing. We have different staffs at bodegas, and we're going to find out today who's staffing things up. Oh, oh that's wow. cool. You got a little chart. Yep. Great. The Bodega what chart has the clientele. It also has what kind of people might be hanging around that time. I love it. It's fascinating. Uh, just like you'll find a vending machine. Vendits are all over the city. And I love vending machines. And I like Japanese vending machines. You get the coolest stuff on The yeah. coolest, most insane stuff. Oh. So the Vendits have their own tables and things where you can buy a live lobster. I you mean, may not know what you're going to do with it, although <laughs> I know somebody who bought a live lobster in the game, and they had a drop bag that they needed to make sure it was safe, so they put the lobster and some ice in the drop bag. And at some <laughs> point, somebody grabbed the bag, ripped it open, and the lobster went after him. <laughs> awesome. So it's good. Okay, so who's leading? You yeah. are number one. Two, three. So I've yep. done my thing, and okay. I'm going to pass. And I will uh, take the lead, walking in nonchalantly. <laughs> okay, I am nonchalantly. The door's open. Uh, that door, I assume? Yes. That. Okay, walk on in. Place yourself, Chief. Uh, where is cash register? These are uh, them? Those are cash registers. What you see is most of them are like those, you know, you cast things over the plate. Oh, bloop, bloop. But, yeah, the scanners. Yeah. And then there's a guy who actually is in charge of it. I okay? see. Okay. And he basically is the one who carries a tablet. And he is right here right now watching. Uh. And he carries a, a, an agent that's wired into the system of the bodega <laughs> so he can also do transactions. Is it wrong that all I can think of is the, in the, the music? The girl from Empanema? Yes, it's always the girl from Empanema. Well, in this case, I'm walking in, I sort of look around, see him do the exaggerated uh -huh. sort of, ah, there, someone to <laughs> yes. talk to, and okay. walk over to him. Excuse, okay. please, excuse, you As work here, walking? yes? Yeah, what do you want? Uh, my wife needs some things. Uh, do you carry such uh, products? Yeah, I think she needs a new husband. No. Yeah. What? Oh. I am very thoughtful going out. I, I am not embarrassed at all to be shopping for such things for her. I think I am quite a catch. <laughs> he looks you up and sounds, yeah, she must be desperate. <laughs> what did you do? Get her preg? He's really kind of an unpleasant guy. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell. But no, I'm still playing it cool. It's like, uh, please, I wish to buy things. I wish to exchange currency for and your goods and services. And finally, the old guy. Okay. Actually, the old guy is further back. Okay. Cool. Doing old guy stuff. Okay. He says, yeah, right. Fem hygiene. It's back there in aisle two. Aisle two. So Thank there's you aisle very two, much. And you start Receiver. in. Okay. So move, which is one of your skills. Okay. Your stat, move, oops, I'm looking seven. at sideways, is seven. So that means you can move seven inches or seven meters. Seven. Okay, so I, I basically used my entire move just getting up here to speak with yeah, him. Yeah, so you, you've got in. So you're okay. not talking to him. And, you know, he's just a really surly old guy that, you know, it's kind of like nothing works well for him. He doesn't fit the description and, of this person we're looking for, I assume. No. Okay. No, but you think... As you're scanning the room, you see somebody who might be the person you're looking for. Uh, by the way, whose name is Finster? Finster. Yes. Finster. That's who, all uh, you kind of got. Which of these matches Finster's description? Um, you think when you're looking around that Finster is actually kind of looking around the corner. 
He's got a big box, a cardboard box, that's filled with data plaques and a couple awards for when he was a top salesperson or whatever. Uh, he's a guy who's obviously emptied out his desk. So it's where he's set up right now. Okay. And he's just, you know, obviously he expects something, so he's hiding around a corner. Uh, I am trying not to cast too many glances in his direction. Okay. I want to just see him as if I am a customer. Okay, we move on. You go, it's your turn, right. I believe. I'll, uh, I'll okay. walk in. Okay, take what's your quick, move? Take a quick look. My move is, uh, my move is seven as well. I'm right, gonna take okay. a look around. What do I see from my, my perspective? From your POV, uh, you see a, uh, you think a nomad, okay? You see a, uh, whoops, got the wrong guy there. Ah, there he is. Uh, I didn't need the priest. You see uh. a kind of anonymous looking guy that is kind of quietly over in a corner, except that he's got a suitcase, not a big one, kind of like uh, the kind of bag you might carry something like, like a camera or a, a gun? Yeah, camera, uh, an expensive put together kind of James Bond gun maybe, but not a big suitcase, not the big, and it is silver, by the way. It's a silk okay. suitcase. Yeah. All right. So uh, it, it's slick. Slick, eh? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So uh, you do not see the owner of this place, the fixer, and you suspect that he's probably back here where the meat is. <laughs> There's coolers along the way, and then there's a double door. Okay, and that's where you are, stepping in and what you see in the room. So I got six more move. Yeah, um, you get six. What kind of groceries and stuff do I see along these aisles? Okay, um, <laughs> such as it passes, there are, you know, like the milk and the fridge stuff and so forth, oh. the smash, much like a 7-Eleven. Milk is a pretty common thing there. to get. Yeah. Um, the feminine hygiene, as it were, basically all the medical stuff is along here. Uh, this is kind of like all the junk food, and this is a mixture of vegetables and so forth, but most of the actually really good veg, which is ridiculously expensive, <laughs> is in these two chests. And uh, what seems to be the section where Finster's hanging out? What's uh, What sort of things Finster are there? Finster is all the way back at cleaning supplies and, of course, toys. I don't, because I don't see that's him, what they do, do. do I see Finster? No, Finster's okay. staying low and you've just walked in, so you don't really have line of sight. Okay. You do see somebody hanging out there. Um, I'll, uh, I'll take my second move. Do, do you go diagonal on this? Yeah, yeah. So two, three, and then I'll just like, excuse me, okay. four. The, the kind of boring John Doe guy lets you kind of, no, doesn't even grunt. He just kind of like lets you buy. Five. And he picks up the suitcase though, the, the case. It's kind uh, of like a little bigger than a briefcase, but not as small, uh, not as large as a regular suitcase. I think this guy's a little sus. So okay. I'm going to stop here and go to the uh, the vegetables. Okay. And grab a, what is it? Like, I'll grab a piece of broccoli or something and hold okay. it up and be like, I nice. will give you a couple hot things you know. Yeah. Um, this is a world with a lot of scarcity, okay? We have what's also called a floating economy. Yes. So that means that broccoli, for example, would be considered to be expensive. Right. Okay? Now, right now, expensive in this period of day is roughly about 50 or 60, Wow. you know, Euro bucks, but the next day it might be lower, because well, in economies that are run based on finding and black markets, prices. That, so you were looking at, it's kind of like looking in the grocery section of a Japanese department store, wow. where okay. there's a melon and it's like three hundred dollars. Okay, so I'll pick up a, a stock of broccoli and look over at the the fellow with the case and say, that's a nice case. Must have cost you a pretty, uh, a pretty buck. He looks at you, and there's a long three beats. Um, you notice that the case isn't too out of line because he's wearing a nice suit. And he says, if you want one, you can get one down the block at the night market. 
and he's kind of, actually I'm doing his voice a little deeper, he's kind of got this really kind of forgettable every dude voice. Yeah. He's got blonde hair, uh, kind of dark eyes with glasses. He's the sort of face you would forget. You, uh, you carry an instrument in there? You a musician? He looks at you and says, you're pretty nosy for a media. Oh, I've, I always like to follow the music. I always like to follow the trends, you know, and you, you're pretty trendy myself. He says, why don't you try following the trends over to, let's say, hardware. Got it? Well, I was just getting something fresh to eat. Don't have to be rude about it. Says, if you want to pick up on somebody, you might as well check on the girl over there behind you. She's, she's basically doing something in the semi-medical feminine hygiene, whatever. I give him a long, hard stare because I'm getting a bad vibe from this guy. And I, say, oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. I say, she's not my type. He goes, I'm not your type. Move along, okay? I really don't want this to get to be fun. I put the broccoli down very slowly. Put the do broccoli it. down slowly. slowly. Now. <laughs> As I'm putting the broccoli down, I'm trying to survey the area around me and the audio suit's kicking up just so he hears the conversation. Okay. Am I also hearing this? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. And I'll put the broccoli down. What, what, am, I, comms. what am I yeah. seeing around me? Okay, uh, you see a young Asian woman who right now is hunkered down. She's looking through um, basically medical personals, that sort of thing in this aisle, okay? Uh, obviously, she doesn't eat junk food or whatever. And I know he's um, right here. Right. He's there. Okay. I pretend um, I don't know him. Yep, same thing. There's another older guy. Th these figures obviously are not part and parcel of it, of but course, I thought I'd better use something that stood out a little bit. You're going to have to do me a bodega crowd. We can do a bodega crowd. <laughs> We're doing a bodega crowd. Just some civilians. New yeah. product from Monster Fight Club. Yep, yep. that's it, man. People who bodega hang out in the crowd. bodega. Right, if you'd like to bodega. see that, <laughs> let us know yeah, in the chat. Some, some, you know, some really cool, like, ice cases and things they could have. So like and broccoli. So as the broccoli. broccoli's going down, because I'm putting it down. Okay. And don't what forget else the $300 His eyes do not miss you. You kind of watch you. Oh, no, you. I'm watching him, He's too. not, like, looking at it, but, he's, yeah, there's, like, frozen fear over broccoli. <laughs> okay? So... We are over to John again. Off to me. So I hear this kind of going on. I double check my safety to make sure it's off. And I'm going to move. <laughs> it's, it's going down, Johnny. It's one, going down. Two, three. And I'm just going to hang over here. Okay. All right, then. So you see a kind of bored, garrulous man who kind of looks at you, looks you over, and sniffs and dismisses you with a snort. Uh, he's cleaning something. He's got a rag. He's wearing something that might resemble an apron. You think he's probably, you know, if not the manager or owner, you know, he's the guy who runs the bodega. Cool. Okay. Also, in this area here is actually pr what's called pre-pack. That oh. is food that self-heating. Uh, think t you know, TV dinners. Yeah, I don't modern know. Modern TV dinners. Modern TV dinners. Nice. Uh, MREs. Think, okay. think MREs that might actually be edible, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, they, they really have come far in there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, yeah, basically this area here, you know, that's moderately expensive. This is really expensive. Uh, this is sort of okay. It's where they, you know, throw the junk food and all that, which is why he's watching. Yeah. To make sure you guys don't steal anything. Okay, so you've wandered in. Uh, you can basically move anywhere on that way, racer. Where do you want to be? Do you just want to stand there looking um, gorgeous? Yes, I'm standing here looking gorgeous, checking out things. I well, you're very I could cool. I the door at the same time. Man, okay. stuff's going to get real. Okay, so you're basically just standing in the doorway. I am inside the doorway, checking out the end aisle, and I am scanning the room because I want to see if anybody else is moving at the same time when as this is starting to heat up. Okay. Uh, behind you, Can I make you... a perception check? Yeah, go ahead. All make right. a perception. This game, by the way, you'll use stats right. and skills all over the board. Love it. For those of you who are GMs, this is really useful because if your characters, so... your player characters, 
are all combat monsters, go down a different path, force yeah. them to look at different so, things. 11 <laughs> plus 5 is 16. 16. Okay. So what you're casing is you actually kind of know this guy's peeping around. You're seeing a guy who uh, you think he's probably some kind of tech or something. Um, he's basically carrying not a briefcase, but uh, a shoulder bag. You know, classic kind of, I might have a computer-like thing in there. And uh, you also see, kind of around the corner, a guy who's really anonymous. Like the most boring brown suit, the most boring kind of washed out blonde Too hair. Anonymous. I'm gonna, Suspiciously I'm gonna, yeah, anonymous. I was just going to say, yeah. <laughs> that's our problem right there. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. And <laughs> by the way, as you're doing that, you you hear, hey, you... You're gonna pick something, and there's a guy behind you, obviously some kind of ganger, oh. and uh, he's got what looks like um, a really ratty, empty backpack, and he looks like a man who's come to buy a lot of smash. <laughs> but not enough money to pay for it. Well, we'll see, we'll see. <clears throat> okay, so he's kind of like, he's not shoving you out of the way, but you know, you, you're getting real, look, get out of my way. Hey, I'm not here to cause any issues. You're obviously way more important than I am. Come on in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he comes in, and he kind of walks pushing back towards you, and you see he kind of puts the, lets the bag drop a little, and you can feel his eyes. He's going up and down looking at you. Hmm. Um, you're not entirely sure whether he's, like, going to hit on you or whether he's sizing you up as a danger but he's busy i, I do look fabulous so he fabulous it, it doesn't surprise me that i'm being checked out is anyone yes, getting no. a dust till dawn vibe here like all of a sudden everyone's <laughs> gonna be whipping out like guns and stuff could be it, it could be okay <laughs> god and uh um, broccoli hammer down let's, let's get some broccoli okay then so we're on to you then you all right i'm going to use my move to sort of wander over here okay uh, i want to position myself so that I basically, if I whip around, I'll have like a clean shot at this guy. Okay. Uh, so I'm I'm sort of standing with my back to this, but also just chatting to this lady. It's like uh, you start chatting. Yes. Uh, excuse me. Um, do you know uh, my wife? She is in needing of uh, some things. She looks totally incomprehensive, she, uh, uh, uncomprehending, <clears throat> and she replies to you in what you think is probably Cantonese. <clears throat> Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, sprechen Sie Deutsch? Uh, Parlez-vous Francais? The, and she once again responds to you in Cantonese. Mm. Uh, do I have any Cantonese? I don't think I do. No. <laughs> you, uh, she is trying to speak a little bit of what is called street speak, which is kind of the uh, lingua franca. The, it's the equivalent of um, pigeon. Okay. If you, you know what pigeon. Yes. So, yeah. So she's like, basically says, I'm really sorry but i'm just here for some stuff for my boyfriend when he comes here uh, but she says it in very broken kind oh, of can i hear that probably over the yeah. cons yeah. I, got, I, got, I got street slang you probably would hear it street slang is what you know she's more or less using interesting okay uh, so I'll sort of respond just sort of uh, more in gestures and whatnot, just okay. sort of like, sorry for bothering you. Okay. And uh, I'm just trying to scope out again this guy and Finster, if I can still draw a beat okay. on him. Okay. So on to you, Mr. Cool. Okay. So this guy's still giving me the deadlocks, right? Mm-hmm. Do I see Finster now? Uh, no, you got your back to him. Okay. You've not told me that you turned around and That's left fine. the wonderful broccoli. Well, I, uh, the broccoli gets put down as I lock eyes with this okay. fancy schmancy guy. And you kind of feel the eyes of the proprietor like on you, like, you better not be stealing broccoli, man. Yeah, yeah. You and know. as I put the broccoli down, I'll be like, I'm good for it, I say. I'm good for it. N letting him know that I know he's looking at me. Okay. To let other people know... That hey, I know. anybody want some broccoli? Anybody want to look at me? I know, even if I don't. But yeah. I know. I'm credibilitying this. Okay, people are, uh, are sort of buying that, you know, you're not a broccoli thief. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... uh by do. the way, 
you notice one that you're because this is a lower case. Yeah. You notice that your um, nomad. Yeah. Racer is basically being talked at um, by a large kind of thuggy looking dude. Yeah. And you kind of realize that, yeah, he came in, Racer was blocking the door, and he's kind of edging Racer back with this kind of look like, hmm, you know, like it's a speculative look, but you're not entirely sure it's just, babe, you're hot. It's something else as well. Okay, well, I'm gonna take this opportunity to take a look at some of my skills. And I've got such skills like human perception, yeah. myth reading, you know, local expert, if that helps. Amazing how that deduction. sort of thing happens. Yep. And I would like to use one of my skills, like deduction, uh, maybe with lip reading to see what he's saying, if I can, or deduction with uh, my uh, uh, human perception to see if I can see if the muscles are flexing up or if things are sizing up for a okay. potential attack. So you're basically trying to figure out what's happening with him. I'd like to insight this. You'd like to insight this. I'm going to call this... You don't know the guy really well, so I'm going to say difficult 15. Okay, so I say so I got a stat DD, level 7, mm -hmm. a level 6. Yep. Total for 13 is my deduction here. Right. So I get to roll this and add to 13. Yep. And my total is a 16. 16. And what did I need? Uh, you needed a 15, if I recall All correctly. Right. Well, Let me take a look. Yes, 15. What's the vibe I'm getting from uh, this? Uh, he's a ganger, and gangers tend to be like hardwired to violence, sex, and drugs. And he obviously is at this point working on sex, but gangers don't have much in the way of uh, good opening lines, patience, or anything else. He is not going to ask her out for coffee. So you I've got what I need. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna shout from across the thing and be like, "Hey, buddy." Okay, he actually stops and looks at you, and uh, my he, sister's not into men. Sorry, he says. I bet she hasn't met the right man. Why don't you give her up, and I can work on that. Uh, by the way, since you were looking, you see a shadow. Somebody else is coming into the door. Same looking kind of person. Yeah, yeah. So, there's another Well, guy. I can see that your vision is quite layered with crimson, but I'll tell you. We don't want to mix it up with you here. You don't have the money to pay for the damages. So, why don't you do yourself a favor? Let me buy you some of this, and I'll hold the broccoli up again. And make sure that it's right in front of this guy's face. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you see <laughs> Mr. I don't want to buy no broccoli. Uh, <laughs> turns away from racer yeah he smiles a big cheerful metallic smile he obviously has wolvers which are kind of uh uh kind of wolverine like claws oh, stuff's getting real now guys and uh <laughs> he has sharpened metal teeth and his eyes glitter uh kind of a orangey red which tells you he's got cyber optics that are kicking in yeah so this guy is boosted um you think he may be part of a group called Maelstrom. Maelstrom. You'll meet Maelstrom later on in 2077. They're quite that's a different because gangs have. So these guys, turnover. these guys are here, and they're not. This I'm not going to bribe them with broccoli. Is that what I'm getting? Yeah, broccoli. He doesn't know what it is. He'll probably try to use it to, you know, rub you, it on his head or something. You need to pass for a second. I'm sorry. Pass. Stand by and pass. Yeah, I'll pass. Okay. I so draw. You draw. Okay. Ooh. What are you using? You have a heavy melee weapon, Fight and you begins. have a very okay. heavy pistol. Very heavy pistol. I okay, don't know so, who you okay, are. So but... you're drawing to him? <laughs> yep. Okay, this ought to be interesting. Allow me to quickly check something. I want to see whether or not you can even pull this off. Because Is he's it... kind of a really dangerous, weird-ass guy. Would he be distracted by my delicious broccoli? <laughs> no, he's, um, you know, he looked momentarily at your broccoli and, you know, kind of looked at you, and he discounted you. You know, let me put this way. What's your body? My body? Uh, my body is five. His, his body is eight. See. The guy is built like a pro wrestler, and you figure at least a decent chunk of that 
is due to enhancements. Has anybody got so, a craving for broccoli so, all of so a sudden? So I, I figured he was distracted in the process yeah. of talking. As I'm drawing, I slide back two. Okay. Put you my back in before. the corner so I'm covered. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you notice you're pe walking by uh, an office door that's okay. slightly ajar, jar, so that's good. Okay. And uh, basically, let me see how he feels about this. Oh, he thinks you're just... You're, you're going to be in the way, but he can work with that. You, on the other hand, he has to actually go through the guy with the suit. So it doesn't look like he's all that interested in that. So he's going, you know, don't walk away, darling. And he's saying that in this kind of, it's not a seductive voice. It's more like it's a buzz kind of voice, like it's been run through a voter. <laughs> and you, you're figuring this guy is pretty cybered up. So I go from head to nutsack. Okay, well, you've moved back. Yep. You're not doing that yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Over to me. I just looked. Okay. I have a grapple gun. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Look Sorry, at, your turn. What, one of the things I will tell people is always Our look at your character sheet means. and see what you've got. This is a very tactical kind of game. And oh, you can win. Good. You can win rapidly if you know what you can bring to bear. But I've seen people who are armed to the teeth who had a better way to do it, and they just got themselves gunned down wow. because of that. Okay. Is okay. it? Uh, is By the it way, over? how long can we go? As long you're, it's up to you. Okay. If you, as long as you got the steam, we can finish out this scenario and call it a day. Okay. We got a well, good audience watching. They love it. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Hey, thank this you is, for being here. We're gonna keep going here. If you're having a good time, let us know in chat. Please follow the channel. This ain't the end of Cyberpunk Red here. Oh, <laughs> trust me, we've got more to play. Oh yeah, I need the blood. Great. <laughs> all right. Here we go. We've got all right. one down. We've got it all. <laughs> Look at all that blood. Oh, right. uh, if it is combat. He has no eyes. You cannot die. Get over here. Oh, I got the grapple gun. Get yeah. over here. Okay, so we're moving around. At this point, uh, he's just kind of moving in. Uh, he's got a bit of Johnny Bravo swagger going on for a guy that you now can see kind of is a metal enhanced speed enhanced this guy drug. Here? Yeah. All right. And the other guy steps in and turns and does something to the door. Ooh. Okay. Uh, okay. Your turn. All right. So again, <laughs> I'm being nonchalant, just sort of like <laughs> da, know, da, da, apologizing da, da. to the lady for bothering her. And one, two, three, four. Again, I'm sort of like looking like I'm looking at shelves I get over here five and then I immediately uh, I would like to activate my speed wear which will give me plus three on uh -huh. initiative okay and uh, if possible I would like to begin shooting at these okay, two okay remember that speed wear <laughs> is going to have some limitations um, there is speed wear that operates uh, rapidly but it goes for three turns and then there's speed wear which will last a long time when you activate it, but it's not as good. I think he's got the so one hour cooldown. This is the one, uh, yes, I, it activate, it uh, gives me plus mm -hmm. three to initiative for one minute and has a one hour cooldown. Right, that's it, Santa Vincent. Okay, so you're getting ready to go jump on this guy. I want you to make an awareness check, okay, perception check. So this will be D10? You take a D10, Okay. you take your int. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you should have on there uh, perception or awareness. Perception is down. Yeah, it's perception. perception. Yes, I've actually got, uh, so uh, the stat is seven. I've got six levels of training, so 13 total. Okay, so um, you've got a total. Roll your dice, okay? And I should be able to add some combat awareness to this as well, yes? Uh, you haven't announced that you're going to. I'm going to let you put... Um, Half up to half of your combat awareness in there if Sounds you want. Great. Yeah, I think I will. Because you know you're new. All right, the the real trick, viewers, is can can I survive maximum Mike? Let's huh. see. I suspect uh, none of us will, but I let's see how it goes. So that is three sixteen total. Sixteen. Okay. For what you're setting up for, that was the professional. You need a seventeen. So he is I'm, basically. I'm going to spend a point of luck. Uh, too late. You oh, need too to do that when you walk have in. Have to do it before. Okay. Right. But I will. You, okay, you did a perception check. Yes. 
Okay, so what you do realize is that something is moving over there oh, and it's just coming in the door. Okay. So you hear the of the door and you feel rather than seeing it. Oh, we should man. notice there's another one over here in the pile. Uh, I just, the I'm, yeah, I'm that's just why I'm using this guy. <laughs> My gut is starting to like churn now. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank God. Uh, and I cannot get an attack on. I've got I, like, I like this guy saying, there is no news, I am trying to be the peacemaker, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a real, you know. Uh, we got this. Know. All right. Okay. Uh, so I cannot get a, an attack off at this point. Uh, no. Okay, great. <laughs> You're getting ready, but you've just realized, yes, something's happening. But because you didn't make your roll, you you kind of know, but you don't know that there's somebody there. And well, you and certainly would not know that, gee, he's a guy in white pants and a black shirt. For uh, future reference, uh, if I want to spend luck, I will declare it before the You guy. have to declare it before you and use it. And do I declare the amount of luck I want yes. to use or just that I want to roll? You declare the amount you want to use. So you, you, don't, you don't want to burn all your luck. Okay. Because there's that moment when you go, oh, man, and I burned it all. And I could I'm use about to go down in flames because I got a negative five. <laughs> and a negative three would mean at least I didn't get crisped. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So, okay. So we I'm, have gone to you now. What is this guy doing? What is he, what is he, does he look like he's concerned about them? <laughs> um, he pushes past you and mumbles something about, excuse me. And he Time basically go. goes, <laughs> and you don't see what he does, but he kind of disappears from your sight. What's everybody else doing in here? They're um, obviously making a ruckus. Yeah, you notice that the older guy over here and this guy, they're both watching. The other woman is kind of watching as well. And um, this guy moved back with his suitcase. Can I amplify okay. my hearing? to that area to see if I can hear the clicks and kind of your piece amp, together what he's your doing. Your amp hearing isn't going to get you that much. It will give you within eight. So let's see if you've got that eight. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yes. So I'm just going to like, zzz, I want to hear if okay. it's like click, click, and if I hear a gun or something coming out. You don't hear a gun, but you hear two uh, latches from the metal case opening. Oh, oh. he's getting something out. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, what, how high is the ceiling? Um, well, a 7-Eleven ceiling is a little higher than normal. <laughs> normal inside ceilings are 8 feet. This is about 12, and it has the kind of the buzzing lights yeah. up there. And uh, what you think is, you know, some kind of particle board or fake, you know. Has he locked support. the door? Yes, he did something, and the door goes chunk. And then on top of it, he turns around, and behind him, the shutters that protect the bodega, when the guys from the bodega leave, oh, here we go. slam down. Okay. Okay. Well, I can see, I'll say, well, I can see that this is clearly not going to go the way we all want it to as I hold the broccoli, and I'm going to very okay. quietly pull out my heavy pistol okay, and put so it behind pulling... the broccoli. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then just shoot this guy. Okay, so you're getting ready for that. Okay. And, and say, I'll pay for it. Bang. Using a heavy pistol? Yeah. Let's give okay. It a I'll pay for my doing it to you? Okay. No, no, no. I'll, I say, I lean back to the, to the guy as I'm blowing the broccoli Okay, up. which guy I'll are you blowing up? The guy at the door or this the guy? guy? Okay, so one, two, three, five, five, twelve. Okay, so um, you're going to need to get with a, a 15 with that pistol. All right, you can I've, reach it. I've got an 11. Yeah. So, so you've already got a good start. I'm going to roll this out. Get, get yourself a four. Rate of fire you know. two. How does rate of fire two work? Bang. Bang. I can two, two shots? Two shots. Let's try it. Oh, that's not good. What was it? It's a one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> crit I want fail. you to roll that again. Crit oh, fail. Man, this is just like when we did Borderlands yeah, earlier. Crit Seven. fail. Oh, yeah. That's minus, over break point. Oh. Oh. See, that was like the one that you're going okay. minus seven. Yep. Yeah. Oh boy. So well, minus this seven. Is where, this is where I get. Where's my D10 again? Oh, oh yes. My God. Oh this yes. Is exactly how the Borderlands thing worked out Mike, earlier. Mike is way too happy right now. Oh well, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Mike's happy. God. We're sad. And That's you have a works. heavy pistol? Uh, yeah. Oh okay. 
So be kind. You, you were like in a hurry that morning. You wanted to get this story. You wanted to get it happening. So you're not going to shoot these guys. No, your pistol has jammed and is having a hang fire. So I'm going to roll. Okay. And if it's even, you're just jammed. If it's odd, the clip goes. May I use one of my luck to modify the number up or down by one to make it even? Okay, I'll give it to okay, you. Roll your dot first. <laughs> no, tell me how much. Oh, no, no, I meant like... Oh, yeah, why would you change a plus one to it? <laughs> it's not going to do anything. Because if he rolls an odd, I want to turn it to a two. Yeah, but you call it beforehand. Oh, yeah. never mind then. Just yeah, yeah. never mind. Yeah, could, <laughs> you could You'll could need just it later to make sure that yeah. you still have a hand, okay? So, even... You basically jam, odd, it's bad. Wait a second. Oh, okay, even. Okay, even. God. Jam. Okay, so you're going, ha, 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 click. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so you're going, go that's, go. <laughs> that's why I'm a media. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And let me check because we're now on you. The way we're going is he's in between you guys. He's in the tail end. You don't know about him yet. Yeah. Oh. But what I do know is... Yes, yes. <laughs> no, I love this. At any rate, he turns because he hears the click of your gun. Behind the broccoli? Yeah, he, but it. he hears the gun jam. So he looks around and he gives you this really kind of cheerful smile. It's a camera. <laughs> yeah, not since oh, 1970. <laughs> I think it's it was the last click camera. It's yeah. Look, it's an antique. Yeah, you know, I keep imagining it's like on one side is Arnold Schwarzenegger and his Terminator years, and then Ryan Reynolds <laughs> holding up a piece of broccoli <laughs> with a gun behind it. Exactly. So the question I have is, do I still get to use my movement at all? No. Oh. You, you've burned your movement. You're not getting out of the way now. Deal. Okay, so you're going. It's been fun, guys. And <laughs> it's, it's pretty amusing. Um, and he steps forward this enormous gun. He goes one, two, three. Oh God! And he gets to within one of you. Yeah. And he says, "I love broccoli." And there's this kind of click hiss sound, and his arms split. Oh, oh no! Jesus! And you realize it's, it's kind of like oh, uh, General Grievous in Star Solo! Wars. Solo! <laughs> and basically it's like, and he goes, give me some. <laughs> so he's now basically popped the ripper. So what you've got is General Grievous, four arms, forewarned, and he has three finger talons that are about a foot and a half long that have popped out of the metal structures. You've, um, is for he those actually just wanting it, broccoli? Huh? Is he actually wanting broccoli? You don't know what your, uh, <laughs> you you have abilities. You can look at your perception, see if you have a broccoli guy there. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use uh, uh, human. Per, uh, is it? Would you say human perception, or can I use bribery to say, hey, hey, I will buy the I entire would never, tray? I would never. I would never bribe somebody for broccoli. No, no, I'll give. Okay. He says he loves broccoli, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, you're I think not, he was being facetious. Your human, your human <laughs> perception tells you he's messing with you. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's, he's waiting for you to pee your pants. Yeah, well, that's happening right about now. Oh, in real life or the game? Uh, <laughs> well, both, maybe. <laughs> oh, anyway, right, yeah, you see, okay. Uh, rippers. Oh, I love rippers. Let me go see how much rippers do again. I usually don't have a chance to use them as much. Do I have Oh, no, question. Would uh, my activation of my speed wear move me up in the initiative order. Yeah, when you activate it, uh, you've used it one. And it okay. lasts for a minute. Right. All right, now what do I got okay. in my... In well, my if he we... hits you twice, and he can hit you four times, um, but I don't know if he's going to bother. I'm going to roll if it's even. He decides to give you everything. If not, he gives you half of it. Can I... Uh... And he throws four dice. Oh, can, boy. can I try and Each like cut. perception or something? Or no, sorry, can I bribe him? Ah, okay. The time for you're bribery going, has you're passed. You're holding broccoli. You know, I almost wish I could film this. It'd probably be hysterical because he's like standing there. He's hunkered over. You can see that his shoulders are built up out of metal and that he's ripped the skin like a bad superhero. And the claws come up, and you see these talons that are about a foot long. Oh. Um, 
for those of you who are familiar with Cyberhunt 2077, these are rippers, and uh, uh. Mantis blades are a close cousin. Rippers came first. So he's gone, junk, and he is going to make an attack at you. But I will let you burn luck because you're going to be trying to get the hell out of it. And he's making a melee attack. So that means Oof. it's you versus him. Okay, and okay. I guess I don't want to use brawling. Uh, you don't, I don't think you have martial arts, do you? Uh, la, 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 la. No, I, I'm really good at uh, perception and bribery, but when it comes to athletics or brawling, <laughs> like me in real life, I'm not really good. Okay. I got evasion, though. I think my evasion is the best I've got. Okay, well, all right. So he's going to attack. Um, first of all, what is your... Um, give me your int and... Um, your my, dex. My int is seven. Okay. My dex is five. Okay. Take it off the int that you know you're in trouble. Yep. Okay. Um, and let's go find out what you do against him. He's not terribly bright. He's got a four. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your int. Yeah. You're going to roll one d10 and add the two together. And I hope you don't roll one because otherwise <laughs> you drop the gun and the broccoli and we're reaching around on the floor. Maximum, hmm. Mike, do you really hope I don't roll a one? <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, he's a nine? Five. Nine is good. Okay. So 16 so, in total. 16 total, and he's at nine, not 19. Okay, so um, he is watching you holding up the broccoli, and he's pausing long enough to, like, get a laugh out of it, but you will, in the next turn after they go, be able to react before he reacts. Okay? Okay. So you're okay. now standing there going, Broccoli? And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just see Ryan Reynolds doing this. It's great. Yeah. I love it. It's good for your health. I, yeah. <laughs> he, he passed that a long time ago. Health? His, he's all, he's, metal is better than meat, baby. He oh, doesn't man. need broccoli. You're up, John. All okay. Right. I guess oh. I'm shooting. Okay. Who are you shooting? Okay. You're yep. going to interrupt his date? Oh, oh yeah, an RV. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well... By the way, we're called the Broccoli Brood? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> we did not agree to this, no. <laughs> Team Monster was a better choice. I don't know. Broccoli <laughs> bro Group, yeah. All right, so 8 plus my handgun, right? Okay, so yeah. 20. Okay, so you got a 20. Well, that's going to hit him, and you're just going to hit him, and you're just using heavy handgun on yep. him? Okay. And you're pretty dang close. Okay, then. So. You only needed the 13. So you nail on him. And uh, you're going to, because that's a heavy, is it very heavy or heavy? So it's a very heavy pistol. Very 4D6. heavy. 4D6. That's your first shot. You can make two. So what's that? 4, 6. There's a crit. 4, 6, 10, 12. Okay. 12. Okay. And 10 more. So 22. 22. Oh, God. Okay. Wow. Crazy. If I took that, I'd be seriously wounded. Yeah, and he will be seriously wounded. So you said 22? Yep. Okay, then. So, yeah, he is seriously wounded. He is not going to be making a death uh, throw, but he is not happy. Okay, so that's the first shot. What do you do your second? You get to make that set shot again. Fire shot. There we go. Okay. No, no. no. You, you have to I gotta roll, roll it. To I, gotta hit roll it. Uh, I just want to roll damage. Come on. 15. <laughs> no. Oh! Crits. Okay. Roll again. Oh! And three. This, this okay. is like Borderlands. Now we're turning no. the tide. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So here's the deal. I'm not going to go through having you designate whether you want to, you know, one what shot arm him. to shoot him off. Right. We, we're kind of moving shoot. fast. Mm -hmm. So right now, what I'm going to say is the roll you made is going to basically mess him up more than usual. So I'm going to basically double that damage as though you hit him. Well, in the head, it would be more than that. But roll your damage. Let's see whether he goes down or not. Wow, look at that That's roll. That's a lot. Uh, okay. Six, 16, 20 times okay. two, another one. 20 okay. plus... 12 is 22. 30, 32. 32. Yeah, okay. And then doubled. Okay, so yeah. 64. 64. Okay. 
So uh, you're going to interrupt his uh, attempt to pick her up by basically blowing his head off his shoulders. And he's <laughs> going to be falling forward in this coming round. That's one way to do it. Okay, boom. That's happened. Okay. How do you like them apples? As he falls, you can just see No, solo. it's broccoli. How do you like them broccoli? There we go. Okay. Love right. it. Broccoli with cheese sauce, bitch. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I got okay. cheese on my broccoli. All right. All right. <laughs> You're next. It, uh, no, wait. That's right. He's between you. But you just shot him. So he's not doing anything his turn. Uh, uh, this guy. Oh, question. Does, uh, because I did activate the speed wear last round, does that yes, move me out ahead, the, ahead yes. of them? Okay. Then so what I, do you want to do? Uh, I basically take one, two, three, drop to my knees, pull out my assault rifle, and let him have it. Now, <laughs> I noticed that it has an auto-fire function. <laughs> auto-fire! Yeah. I yeah. used the broccoli as a shield, like, like, like uh, hiding behind the broccoli. Like Tom yeah, Arnold, like, like oh. Tom Arnold in True Lies behind the telephone pole, where he's just checking all this piece. I'm just gonna hold the broccoli. I think you'll be fine. This guy's got a lot of metal in him. It's, Most of the bullets oh, probably won't go through him. Oh my god. Oh, I love oh, this. Gotta like garlic. Gotta yeah. be. By the way, yeah, in case you're curious, hold it out and just close he is my what eyes. is called a booster, okay? okay? Boosters are basically bad guys guys who have gone out of their way to get their bodies enhanced and run around terrifying the neighbors. Hmm. So, you were just opening up on him, and we're going to see he doesn't really know you're there because he's looking at Broccoli Boy. Now, this, I uh, would not be using <laughs> so. handgun, I'd be using, I assume, shoulder weapon? Shoulder weapon. Great. So, uh, yep. same, actually, same in both. I have uh, okay. seven in the stat and six points of training, so 13 total. 13, huh? Okay. Oh, should be 10. All right, 13. Roll start. that D10, Mark. And oh, I would like is, to right? declare that I would like to spend some luck on this. All of it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, normally, you would not be able to spend luck on it. Oh, normally, no? Yeah, okay. unless you say you're going to do it. Oh, but... So if you're going... You know, I, haven't, I haven't rolled yet. He hasn't yet, rolled so. yet. Okay, fine. Yeah. Now you can yeah. do it then. Okay, so yeah, I want to okay. spend... I'm going to say two points of luck. So okay. I'm, so I'm a well, you're like really bloody close. So let's see. The interesting part is using assault rifle. Assault rifle's curve is best at around between seven meters up through around fifty meters. Okay. So so it'll be an better important was, part is better if he was here to do it then. Uh, he's not really big enough of a distance. Okay. That's well, one, I mean three meters. Each considering way. that I am quite. Yeah, you know, experience with these weapons, I'd probably know that and like yeah, know. Yeah, well, you just know it's going to make it more difficult. That's yeah, all. well, you know what? You I'm can still do it. Believe me, use, if I'll... I shoot somebody with an assault rifle, it keeps going. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Take them out. What do you What do you think? What do you think that a, a soldier of my training would uh, would attempt at this point? Would I know that it's a massive disadvantage, or would I uh, go with the assault rifle anyway? I mean, really, I'm already, I'm already at a 15. Da, 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 yeah, da, I would da, use the da, tool that is at hand. Da, da, that is the assault da, da, rifle. Da, da. Okay. So that is a total of 21. 21. Yeah, plus okay. two lucky set, right? Yes. All right, no, no, that's then. including assault the rifle. So you needed, let's see, you're pretty close. You need a 17. Mm -hmm. So you have done it. Okay. okay. So take that assault rifle. Okay. And you are throwing 5d6, oh, okay? Oh, man. 5d6. Now, you have an option later, okay? For the auto fire. Right. If you choose to, we're not doing it quite yet because you've already shot. Mm -hmm. But you can do auto fire, which basically, if you have 10 bullets left, you should. Oh, I think yeah. you have 30 in your clip. Uh, 25 and, in the clip. Okay, but you still have 10 left. And basically, you can fire. You can't make an aim shot with it. But what happens is the amount of damage is increased. You're putting okay. more bullets in the air. Yeah. So when you hit them, you do more damage. Although I'm realizing auto fire is probably not a great option considering my client is right behind him. So yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's go a little more precise with this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go with the 5d6. So that is 2 plus 4, 6 plus 5, 11, okay. 12, 13. 13. Okay. He drops it down to 10. So you got one more roll. You got another roll of damage on it. Roll it again and add it, add it to it. Yep. So another roll of... All right. Yeah, drop it down. So oh, the, oh six, 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 six. So, so that number is of the 18, shot. 22, 23. 23. Drop four, so it's... 17. 17. 27 no. in total. Okay. 
Wait, wait, wait. You had, this was how much again? Uh, this was 23. 23, dropped four points from that. 19. So it's 19, okay, so 19, 10, 20. Ah, this guy is definitely seriously wounded, and I just want to see whether he has to make a death save, whether he can make it or not. Ah, uh, yes, he can make it. He is still up. He is not lying on the floor bleeding, and part of it is, unlike his friend, he has body armor. Okay. And, and it's naturally built into him. That's why you notice he's so hulked out. Okay, so... Eh, he's going to be too busy to notice at this moment. You know, he was basically thinking about using you and the broccoli to make a fine dish, and he had to <laughs> cut the broccoli and you with it. Uh, so he is busy, and you I, get to go. I lucked out. So can I unjam the gun and shoot him in the same round? No, you can unjam the gun, the gun this round. Okay. Unjamming a gun takes a while. It'll take a full round to do that. Do you have another weapon? I don't believe I do. I just have that pistol. So what I would like to do, does he have any weapons on him? Uh, he is a weapon. He is the weapon? Yeah. Okay. You're uh, figuring the way, what you've got is a heavily muscled human. Most of his chest is metal. <laughs> he has four arms. Uh, and the four arms, each one has three foot long spike like blade weapons you, you either want to get away i'm getting run, away or shoot <laughs> he's got I can't forearms shoot him, so most people have forearms come on yeah, yeah but he knows what's <laughs> happening he's forearmed <laughs> so just for, warned as just, well yeah. yeah just for posterity i'll stuff the broccoli in his mouth and go one two three four five six okay hey, so you're running there and this guy like looks up and he goes oh my god Oh, and hey. then he goes, and you realize, yeah, it's Finster, the guy you need to talk to. Stay here. Okay. And You'll be he's, fine. Okay. So and I'll, he's, I'll, I will actually try to un, okay. unjam my gun. Meanwhile, while we're doing all that, he walks in, followed by our last guy, oh, and the metal doors slide down. <laughs> so the entire front of the store now is behind security. Okay. So oh, I will unjam my gun. Do I need this to roll? guy? This guy here is going, muttering something about goddamn. Look, just take the smash and get out of here. <laughs> and this guy, let's see. Oh, he's in a terrible mood, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got terrible luck. So let's go find. Is he even going to? Even he decides he's going going to kind of step back over the counter. Odd, no. He's getting in the face of a booster who's about to beat the crap out of him. Okay, that's the booster. This guy's bad luck is our good luck, I think. Okay. Yeah, let him scissor him up for a while. Do you have any explosives? That's I do not. Three. I have uh, assault rifle, okay. heavy pistol, heavy melee weapon. Okay. Okay. Um, you see this guy, he does not pop all the stuff that Big Boy does. He just simply pops rippers and he essentially steps forward and guts this guy no. so that he's suspended on the two on the six spikes well i don't gotta okay. pay for that broccoli now <laughs> and he's going you ah, blood is pouring out of his mouth and the other guy kind of swaggers down the way towards where you are all right now i'm okay. uh dropped to one knee as i mentioned oh so, that's right so, so yeah. i'm like behind this camera, okay i assume you're right he cannot see you. He could see you if you were behind the vegetables. Right. But <laughs> you're not behind the vegetables. That's actually a full... Now, did I manage count. to get my gun uncocked? Uh, you're, you've done it this turn. Sick. Good. All okay, right. so you've got... Chunk, 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 hammer, 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 hammer. Ka -chink, chink. The clip fell out. Uh, you have caseless ammo, but the caseless ammo can jam yeah. on itself. So uh, This guy is dead. Yes, he's dead, he's dead, dead, dead. Okay, great. I'm just using those four. What I do is I mark how dead he is by putting a number of blood on him. Sure. It's easier for me to kind of, from a distance, look at it. Okay, so as far as we know, we have these three opponents to deal with, plus whatever this guy is up to, so. Yeah, okay. I don't know what he's doing yet. By the way, you shot him and you did do damage. Yeah. Oh yes, quite a bit. Yeah, so he is at three because he hasn't had to make the total death save and die. Okay, so they are not happy. Um, he's gutted him. You're now locked in there with them, okay? 
And finally, um, let's see. You're there. I'm You're the on corner. the other side. Yep. You're in a corner. Uh, so none of you see what happens when the uh, guy in the suit basically opens up the case. Okay. Nope. And <laughs> for what you hear a whirring noise. Yeah. And, uh, hmm, you're a solo. Let's make a check. A uh, whirring so noise? So what you're doing oh, is... That's noise. a Gatling gun. Okay, so this is an int thing. Oh, man. Okay. Into seven? Yeah, so it's a perception. Oh, okay. Uh, it could be a lot of things. It could okay. be a drone. Perception. It could be all kinds of stuff. Perception. Perception. That's a Gatling gun. There we go. Uh, so I have a total of 13 in perception. Okay. Make a roll. 16 will do it. Is it a high-pitched whirl? <laughs> uh, yes, 20. Okay. Ah, oh, shit. It's drones. Drones? Drones. I'll actually yell Rocket that out drones. like, drones! Okay, and you see four drones rise up uh, behind, essentially, the feminine hygiene projects, <laughs> products. <laughs> and, ah, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> found them. And uh, you also see, um, let's see. Okay. Yep. Okay, so you also see that while they're doing that, this guy over here, um, he pulls out um, what looks kind of like a blowgun. Which hmm. one does? This guy. A blowgun? Yep, he pulls out what looks like a blowgun. Oh, yeah, he's got one there. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, <laughs> matter of he does not seem to know whether or not he's got his target acquired or not. But you realize, well, you know, silver metal blowguns are probably not like, it's not a vape. You know, there you are. He's going to do something bad with it. Uh, and this guy has ducked down, having released from his suitcase the drone. And he has four drones in the air. I worry about where they are in a minute. Okay. Okay. So. All and I know, good. as a solo, I know that these drones are probably very bad news. Yeah. Okay. Um, depending on them, drones can pack poison. Mm -hmm. They can pack guns. Uh, they can pack sonics and things that can mess up cyberware. Okay. You guys are not terribly cybered up, as I recall. A mm, little bit. Oh, what do much. you got? I've got Biomonitor. I've got my Speedware. Oh, I, okay. I do have a Neural Link. Your Neural Link, um, they got to really hit you with something strong to jangle that up. So okay. you're okay. What do you got? Um, just a, uh, let's see, a Neural Link and an interface plug, and that's about it. Yeah, you're set up, and your link allows you to drive your AV4 with your brain if you need to. So can I activate my uh, gun on my AV4 remotely? No. Okay. You need to be in there. We're going to have to get out of here. I think there's a little door here we can get out. Maybe. Okay. Uh, the drones are up in the air. And uh, how much time do we say we had? We, got about, how we, many we, more... we realistically got about 10 minutes left on okay. this. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to have to. So we should up. probably uh, narrate okay. this one out if you'd like. Well, I'm going to narrate that um, the girl there stands up and. She opens up the backpack she had on the floor. I knew it. And she pulls <laughs> out a, what kind of looks like a very small uh, lime bike, a lime scooter. And she unfolds it, and she starts, leaps on it, and rushes towards this guy. Okay? She's obviously getting the heck out of Dodge. Yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah, well, you know, I wouldn't either. Uh, the question is, oh, yes, but the question is going to be even, odd, even he doesn't like those guys, odd, he doesn't like you guys. Congratulations, he doesn't like you guys. No. Okay, so he's going to make an attempt to hack your cyberware. Mine? Um, I have an decide. audio, I have a cyber audio. And an amplified hearing. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, and I'll double that. So it's three. So he basically, you're close enough, and he and thinks sorry, you're the biggest guy? threat. He's right. Uh, where is he? Um, the guy Robbie. with the blowgun? Or the No, guy with it's the... this guy, actually. Oh, Finster. Is it no, Finster? Fin no, it's not Finster. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got so many bodies moving around. I <laughs> There's stop a lot of people in this it. bodega. Yeah, well, got, you know, so that's, that's drone guy here. That's blowtorch or, or, uh, yeah, she, this guy. is, yeah, this is driving girl, as yeah. I'll call her. 
this is the guy here and he steps forward and he kind of hunkers down his eyes flash and he is a net runner oh i see and so he is going to try to hack your system to be fair i did open up with an assault rifle in a bodega <laughs> yeah and i could be seen the as a bad threat. news <laughs> is you did it and you hit that guy but you know bullets went spraying past of course it. yeah yeah okay I'm, I'm a bit reckless okay so the thing is he's got to work the hack against you okay? okay so i'm going to basically just tell you what happens as as he oh. works the hack <laughs> okay Sorry, I'm doing the math here. Oh, no worries. Yeah. What do you have in the way of software? Sorry, with the uh, software? Yeah. What? Oh, sorry, cyberware. Cyberware. So for cyberware, I've got my bio monitor, I've got my neural link, and I've got my speedware. Okay. Uh, your speedware crashes, Ugh. and you're essentially kind of feeling like you're moving through molasses. Okay. So you've been hit with a speedware attack. Crazy. Uh, he doesn't know who you are. He, so he knows I'm a guy who walked into the bodega he's in and started and firing started an shooting. assault rifle. Okay. So unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap it up. Okay. Okay. So, so here's, let what, me, here's what I'm going to say to this guy. Okay. Basically, you come I with us. I still have lots of broccoli. Come with us. We'll get you out. Uh-huh. I still got some broccoli in my hand. We'll go grab a bite to eat. We can get out through this little pocket here. Uh-huh. He'll cover our exit. Once or you could go out the back door. We'll do the back door. So you guys are headed out the back door. So I will, I will like, signal over to you and be like... And point toward the back right. door. Okay. So we throw the civi civvies in the general direction of the bad guys. Yeah, and so we right. duck down, we go along. I'll <laughs> Good grab strategy. Some, I'll grab some food along the way out. Okay. Uh, obviously, and I'm going to just, like, try to open up and get, get this guy out, out of my way. way. Okay. I'll work my way down here. Okay, make your shot. He knows you're there, so he's going to get to, uh, well, at that range. Oh, he's no. he's just fumbled. And you know, oh, perfect. Oh, Excellent. he seriously fumbled. Okay, okay, great. So. And I'm spending luck, uh, so he, I get a total of 19 plus another luck you, up to 20. You've nailed on him. Okay. He's dead. So that'll be another 5d6. So that's another 5d6. Ooh, lots that's of sixes. Lot. Uh, that is uh, 10, 11, is that 13, okay. 16 death save time and I don't think he's going to make it it's going to be pretty hard uh no he does not make his death save Oof. excellent oh, yeah. and yeah. as he falls I literally vault over his falling body and okay get as I, close. I'm not going to take because we're wait, we're <laughs> doing it against time I'm not going to make you roll to see whether or not you fall over him trip and we all get a good laugh <laughs> okay I thank you I appreciate all your right. restraint well, welcome you can tell so you, you guys all break links. out just a all quick what has happened you, you guys were basically meeting Finster in the same place. There was a guy uh, the, portrayed by the plague doctor with a bag who's actually an assassin Ooh. and um, basically spends a lot of time looking boring as hell. And he ca does his work through drones. So okay. who is he there for? Uh, you don't know at first but the odds are he is there for finster i would suspect Just finster to yeah. shut okay. him up yeah meanwhile w the guy who had the um blow gun. The, the blow gun he is a nomad and he is a nomad um the background you'd have on him if you you know were able to do real life his name is murphy and he used to be a fairly tight aerospace guy uh air force pilot and now he uses his AV4 to do runs. Nice. So, wow. he so they're is, working together? A brother from no, another No, as it turns out, he was supposed to meet up with her. She's a Zing Sao, <laughs> and she is a courier bringing him something that he was supposed to deliver. There's a whole bunch okay. of mess going yeah. on so, here. So, yeah, there's, there's a, a whole bunch. Of, so the they were supposed to be yeah. over there. This is a bodega okay. of So the great, lesson uh, is, import, if you want real right? action in your life, go to the go bodega. To the yes. So, Mike, <laughs> where can we go to get Cyberpunk Red? Cyberpunk Red, available through all distributors. All your distributors. Okay, all the distributors, your local friendly hobby uh, hobby store. Yeah. You can reach us out at our Talsorian Games, and we'll hook you up. And it's available anywhere you really want to do serious gaming. And you can bet that Six Sides of Gaming will play this game again. We really, we wanted to play, we could play all night, 
but unfortunately they cut our power at six here. Oh man, on, that's, in the booth, so we have, to, we have to wrap yeah, so this up. John Kowalewski, you got your big Kickstarter going on right now. Yes. Borderlands, the Kickstarter going off. Thank you. Doing very well. Please check out Borderlands on Kickstarter by Monster Fight Club. Mr. Mark Mir, where do they find you? Uh, okay. You can see me on the Black Dice Society every Thursday on the official right. Dungeons that and Dragons. That is the best show. Thank mm -hmm. you. On the official Dungeons and Dragons YouTube and uh, Twitch streams. Uh, you can also see me on Stitch of Fate, a podcast by night, wherever you find your podcast, if you like the vampires. We have holiday specials of both those shows coming up this month. And, of course, I am available on Cameo for all your Mass Effect catchphrase-related needs. <laughs> That's right, Mass Effect. Well, Here's... when we get back into space in Cyberpunk, We'll give you a call. Well, thank you very much, sir. Here and we are. What a great pleasure. Gaming. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. It was don't a pleasure having you as well. Thank don't you. forget to check out our channel. Please follow us for future things. We've also got a Kickstarter going right now called Legacy of Mana in the 5th edition D&D universe. Please check it out. Hopefully, Adrian will drop the link into the thing for you to take a look at. And, uh, yeah, so, Mike, I had a great time. Uh, Mark, mm -hmm. Glad I mean, you guys had a good one. You, you, you pack a, a, a terribly scary punch. I was, uh, <laughs> I was uh, fearing for my life, uh -huh. but I played the media well, and you... I you, think you did well, and, you. you know, I'm, I'm going to find Ryan Reynolds and ask him to play you in the movie. <laughs> but in the meantime, just so you're curious, we are using... I put this together about an hour... Yep. We're using maps from our partner, Loke Battle Mats. Mm -hmm. So this, there's 60 different mats that can expand to twice this size. Mm -hmm. I used a section in one of our new project, Data Pack. Data Pack has uh, about 10 adventures that are just really easy, fast adventures, but also has the 20 things in Night City section. And mm. 20 freelancers in Night City is where we visited and all of these people can be found in the freelancers section. They're all, they've only got their own messages and their own methods. And then, in addition, you guys didn't actually get out, but there was an entire section I had originally that was going to be when you got into the subway. Oh, I love a subway yeah. fight. Right. But we, we're going to have to pass on that subway fight because you know, we're going to actually deal with your AV4. It wasn't going to be available. Oh, oh man, they were taking it before. Uh, you're going to have to go steal it back. Mike, well, thank Mike, you thank for you. your time as always. Thank you we'll be for back here tomorrow you, at, uh, in the morning. We're going to be playing Shadowrun, and then we're going to be playing 5th Edition D&D. &D. So we look forward to seeing you on Six Sides of Gaming then. Take care, everybody. All right.